Welcome in everybody to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Football Podcast. It is me, Joey P. Joe P. Zapia. And today, my boys are back in town to do two rounds of an NFL mock draft. That's right. We're going to double up today. And of course, by my boys, I mean Derek Brown all hopped up on energy drinks. Scott Bogman, who's letting the beard grow out. And Thor Nystrom, who is very happy because I'm wearing my Minnesota Viking shirt today to put cool. him in a good mood. Because I beg Thor to keep it brief when he's talking about <laughs> cornerbacks in the second round yeah. so we can keep the show on time. I kid, Thor. I love you so much. So today, again, we're going to go through two rounds of the NFL draft. The combine is in the book, so we know a little bit more about some of these players. The guys have some takes. Now, some things may change. Some things might not. But the one thing that's never going to change is our quality of broadcast here on Fantasy Pros. Make sure if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, drop your comments below. We love to hear from you, especially about the picks that we screwed up or the picks that you know better than us. That's the most fun thing. But again, we want to know from you. Are you happy with the selections for your team? Are you unhappy? Do you think certain guys should land in certain places? This is one of many mock draft shows we'll be doing in the weeks and months ahead. We'll be doing more with some special guests. We've got lined up some big guests as well. But let's start with the pick number one, Derek Brown is on the board for the Chicago Bears. Debro, the pick is in. Who is going first overall in our second draft on Fantasy Pros? I'm going to go the same direction I went the first time, Joey. Caleb Williams. It's the only direction Chicago is going to go. We know they're going quarterback and trade Justin Fields. All right, let's go. I think the All draft right. starts at two. Now, out of curiosity here. Why is Caleb always just the default here in, in that sense? Do you get any feeling that in the weeks to come, this calculus might change at all? I don't. I think Chicago zeroed in on him. We haven't heard any rumors, any speculation, anything else about them going with any other quarterback. Now, are they out there probably doing their due diligence about every other quarterback in this draft? Yes, they are. But we haven't heard any rumors to at least push back on that. Now, starting at pick two and moving down, we have heard some scuttlebutt out there about other quarterbacks being the QB2, QB3 in this class. So that's where I think it gets interesting. But I think Caleb's locked into one. All right. Fresh from Reddit, Thor Nystrom for pick number two from the Washington Commanders, who's already putting some scuttlebutt in there for the first and second picks. Thor, who are the commanders selecting at number two in this draft? Drake May remains the betting favorite, but he is holding on to that by his fingernails. We have uh, collectively, me and Debro, and I, th I think in the last mock we did as well, we've had Jaden Daniels in the second slot. I'm going to keep Jaden Daniels in the second slot. I think Jaden Daniels ends up going here, and I think you're seeing more smoke about this. In fact, uh, the morning that we record this, Mel Kuyper came out and said that it appears that Jaden Daniels is settling into the two slot right behind Caleb Ooh. Williams. We've started to hear more and more about that. I think Jaden Daniels is a better fit for Cliff Kingsbury's offense than Drake May as I've gotten into that on other shows. But we're going to give uh, the Washington Commanders Jaden Daniels in the two slot. Great opportunity right now in the betting market to make sure you're watching on betting pros. I know Thor and I especially are going to have some great content on there in the weeks ahead in terms of some wagering when it comes to the NFL draft. Scott Bogman, two quarterbacks are off the board, Daniels and Williams. So the New England Patriots are up next. There's another QB still on that board. Is that where they're going? Yeah, the get him Drake May. You never know when you're going to be picking this high again, uh, especially a franchise as revered as the Patriots. So let's go ahead and take that quarterback. We can spend money on the offensive line. We can spend money on the playmakers as well and later draft picks. But uh, I think if you're picking this high, you have a bad quarterback in Mac Jones and not a lot of future out there. You're not going to be the team to woo Kirk Cousins, I don't think. So let's go ahead and make the right move and take the QB in this spot. And, you know, Drake May is falling to me for no reason. I do think he is a better, I think Daniels is a better fit for Washington, but I do think Drake May is the better QB and he has a longer track record than uh, Daniels does with his one year of success at with LSU. So mm. I think the, the Patriots got to love this. You get basically Phillip Rivers 2.0 at three. I, I love this pick for them. Uh, I love it too, and I also love that you said the words "revered Patriots" uh, team. So that that was that was a nice couple of words. Well, I'll get used really to it, Joe. That. Oh, I'm not. I've known you a very long time. It's the first and last time. So <laughs> number four is back to Derek Brown. It's the Arizona Cardinals. So Debro, uh, the three big quarterbacks are off the board. Is it pivot to wide receiver? Yeah, it easy is, man. Like, I think that, again, I, I've made a chalk pick starting out the beginning of this draft. I'm going to make another one here. Marvin Harrison Jr., come on down to the Cardinals. They need a number one wide receiver. 
in the worst way. They've said nothing but good things about Kyler Murray. So give him a true number one. Let's make this passing attack run through Marv and Trey McBride. This is an easy pick. Let's move on. All right. Next up at number five, Thor. And Thor, it seems like there's Mm. some trade winds blowing. What's happening here? Uh, This is just in. What's going on? Take us through. Well, first, Joey, I, I love that you dressed up for the show today. Uh, Skull Vikings, and, and we are making a trade here. The Vikings are moving up the board from 11. We're trading the 11th and 42nd pick, so the Vikings second-round pick for number five. Vikings move up, take their quarterback. There's only one left on the board of those top four guys, J.J. McCarthy. I mentioned that Mel Kuyper report from earlier today. In that, he mentioned that he all he's hearing is J.J. McCarthy when he's talking to league sources now. And don't be surprised if J.J. McCarthy bypasses Drake May in the pecking order. Mm. Either way, I, I think, you know, before when we talked about this stuff or when it was out there in the public, it was a big three for these quarterbacks. Maybe not in our company. We've always referred to it as a big four with J.J. in there. But the public at large, I think you have to start referring to it as a big four now. When those first three guys go off the board, the Vikings, the Broncos, there's going to be a race to get up and get the fourth guy. Vikings move up here and get McCarthy. I think he's a really good fit in Kevin O'Connell's system. McCarthy, 61-3 and as a starting quarterback going back to high school. Just won a national championship as a 20-year-old for Jim Harbaugh, who's now the Chargers coach, of course, former 49ers coach. Jim Harbaugh said uh, J.J. McCarthy should be the first quarterback taken. If Jim Harbaugh's roster did not have Justin Herbert, we would know the fifth slot is where it stopped for McCarthy because Harbaugh right. would absolutely take him there. In fact, Harbaugh said he should be the first overall uh, player taken, but we're taking him for the Vikings. All right, so the Vikings move up here, which makes sense too because the Giants, a lot of rumors that they have uh, lost faith in Daniel Jones. That's been circulating around. Speaking of the Giants, Bogman, they have the sixth pick, so now McCarthy's off the board. Which direction would they go? <clears throat> Uh, I, I got to take Malik Neighbors for them, the wide receiver out of LSU. And this is because the Giants have so many needs and they made so many mistakes. Um, look, there's offensive linemen they can take here as well. But I think this franchise needs to take the best player on the board. The best player on the board at this point in the draft is Malik Neighbors. He also fills another desperate need for this team. So I think you go BPA, you take the playmaker, you take the guy that can stretch the field. You're probably already pot committed to uh, Daniel Jones, unless you want to pull a Broncos and have so much. If, if you want to beat them in terms of guaranteed money that you sink for a player that you uh, release, then maybe there's a competition brewing, but um, you got to go out and get your playmaker. So uh, Malik Neighbors, it is. Number seven, Derek Brown is up, and the pick is for the Tennessee Titans. Debro, which way do they go? <sighs> this roster has needs all over the place, but again, kind of like Boggs is talking about, we're going BPA here, man. Stopping the fall for Joe Alt, offensive tackle out of Notre Dame. If you even want to have a chance for Will Levis to possibly be your guy and you want to see what he has, he needs time in the pocket. This offensive line struggled last year. Joe Alt is a fantastic building block for this franchise and for this offensive line moving in the right direction. All right, Thor, Atlanta is up next, and this pick is yours. Now, just out of curiosity, with Chicago in this draft taking Caleb Williams, uh, does Atlanta stay at this pick here, or do you think this is where Fields ends up? I'm just curious. Do you think uh, there's a better chance than not that this stays with the Atlanta Falcons? Yeah, well, speaking of the betting market, uh, Kirk Cousins become the prohibitive favorite to sign with Atlanta. We've seen a whole bunch of smoke there. Mike Florio, who's another Vikings fan like ourselves, Joe, like you uh, has me. yes, exactly yeah. has has reported that the Cousins are looking into houses in the Atlanta area. So in this exercise, we are going under the supposition that Atlanta has signed Kirk Cousins. What would they need? Uh, A number two receiver. Atlanta already has really good weapons there, but their number two receiver right now projected would be Mac Hollins. If they take Roma Dunze, who has fallen down here, you put him across from Drake London. You already got Kyle Pitts. You got B. John Robinson. Now we're cooking with gas for Kirk Cousins. Roma Dunze just is coming off a fabulous combine, as you guys know. 9.91 Raz. Uh, absolutely ridiculous. And he had the coolest moment at the combine as well, where he stayed late to try to get under a 6.63 cone. He he already had a 6.6, uh, a 6.88 three cone, but he wanted to run the best three cone of the wide receiver group. So he tried it four times, five times. 
I, I'd never seen that before. A kid who wanted to do the drill over and over and over again beyond his his two allotment. But at 6'3", 212, kid's a stud athlete. He's got the speed. He's got the agility. Got the release package, the strength. Of course, he's got the the, the ball skills, everything like that. He's a great route runner. Uh, Would be a really good fit in Atlanta. If they can take Odunze and get Cousins with what they have already in place, Atlanta becomes an immediate contender in the NFC for me for the chip. Uh, not forget, forget the division folks just for the NFC period. Uh, fascinating to see the ninth pick, the Chicago bears back to Scott Bogman. Who will the Bears select at nine potentially? Well, I like this because I can't take Roma Dunze, who has been the pick in every single mock draft I've seen. Uh, Thor uh, took him one spot ahead with Atlanta. So I like this, though. I think this team still has a lot of needs. Obviously, mm-hmm. they do need a playmaker at the wide receiver spot. But with Dallas Turner on the board here and this team just needing to add pass rushers, you know, they traded for Montez Sweat last season. They need interior guys, too. I just don't know that there's one good enough to pick it at this spot here. So uh, go. Go ahead and give me Dallas Turner, the edge rusher from Alabama to improve and go on the other side of Montez Sweat. And now you make this a dangerous pass rush for a in a division that has the Vikings, the Lions now. Mm -hmm. So I I think this is uh, the way to build to counteract those teams in your division. Yeah, the Bears need help on both sides of the football. So certainly Turner would go a long way there. The New York Jets are up next at 10. Debro, uh, is it a matter of starting to protect Aaron Rodgers here or? Whoever's playing quarterback for the Jets in 24? Yeah, it needs to be. I mean, that has to be the onus, man. Give them time in the pocket. Give Aaron Rodgers time. I mean, we already saw last year what happened to this offensive line. Seventh highest pressure rate allowed. Third highest pressure rate over expectation. We're going to give them Olu Fashanu, offensive tackle out of Penn State. They need blocking help. Uh, Makai Becton's a free agent. He was a bust anyway. So, yeah, big tackle going to the, uh, to the Jets here. Does right. this pick come with new turf? <laughs> I, think, I think that's part of it Fashano's is bringing with him from penn state yes all right the first 10 picks are in so if you want to see the recap of these picks because i'm not going to go through all of it on the audio we're doing two rounds today make sure you go over to the youtube channel don't forget to subscribe to fantasy bros youtube ring the bell to let go zing for notifications if you're listening on audio only so you can see the big board because we want to see how the uh, next part of that trade that we saw earlier between the Vikings and the Chargers shakes out because Thor has got some plans for the Chargers before we get to who that pick is going to be. I want to talk to you about DraftKings Sportsbook because right now we are in the thick of NBA season and DraftKings Sportsbook has a deal for you. They are the official sports betting partner of the NBA and new customers who deposit $5 or more can get a no sweat bet up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. So if you're into the NBA, make sure you check out Matt Modi Monday, Wednesday, and Friday live on Betting Pros YouTube channel, giving you picks live. In the meantime, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use that promo code FANTASYPROS. New customers can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000, and if your bets lose, that's okay. You're getting it anyway, only on DraftKings Sportsbook with that promo code FANTASYPROS. The crown is yours. So, let's get to the other part of that trade here. Thor, at pick number 11, now that the Chargers have moved back, what do they do with the draft capital they have? Yeah, the most ubiquitous pick that you see for the Chargers in mock drafts where they don't have trades at number five is Brock Bowers. So what a coup it would be if the Chargers in this scenario, they move down to 11 with Minnesota in that trade. Brock Bowers is still here. The other position in need for the Chargers is offensive tackle. And so if if Fashanu had fallen down here, we would have considered him as well, but Debro just took him for the Jets. That makes this a very quick card turn in with Brock Bowers' his name on it. Jim Harbaugh is off. He loves to run 12 personnel and he loves to motion guys around. Well, what a great fit this is. Uh, Brock Bowers, I don't even think about him as a tight end. He's an offensive weapon, uh, a, a Swiss Army knife uh, type guy. You can line him up outside, you can line him up in the slot, you can line him up in line. Can line him up in the backfield. George's coaching staff had all sorts of fun with Brock Bowers. You know, both of the passing concepts, he can win at all three sectors, but you can also hand the ball off to him. You know, talking about the Swiss Army knife thing. So this is how Jim Harbaugh gets the the rebuild uh, off the ground in in Los Angeles. Gives uh, Justin Herbert a weapon to throw to. I heard Kirby Smart say that he would have been one of our best running backs if we had let him be uh, the running back full time. To a pretty Ooh, a big statement percent. there. Yeah, uh, let's talk about Swiss Army Knives. All right, back to the Denver Broncos now at number 12, Boggs. You alluded to the Denver Broncos having all kinds of troubles. So 
What pick did they make here to start smoothing over some of those trouble spots? Yeah, another team that, uh, you know, cap strapped because Russell Wilson has uh, left the, them holding the bag at this point. So uh, you're going to have to not be able to buy these players. So you're going to have to go BPA. And I think Jared Verse is the best player for this team available. They have needs to literally every single defensive position. But Browning was really their only good pass rusher last season. Um, and he was widely inconsistent, specifically at the end of the year. So let's get him another stud that can protect the edge and pass rush in Jared Verse, the edge out of Florida State. Next up at 13, the Las Vegas Raiders. Derek Brown, you're on the clock. You're going to face Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes religiously every single year. you got to bring interior pressure, and that's why I'm giving the Raiders Jerzon Newton defensive tackle out of Illinois. John Jenkins, Bilal Nichols are both free agents. Newton can bring the pressure. Eighth in pass rush win rate last year fits a need. Let's go Raiders. All right, next at... All right, next at 14, the New Orleans Saints. Thor, they're on the clock. They've got a lot of issues. What's the first thing they do here to try to fix some of those problems? We're going to try to address the biggest one, which is along the offensive line, and we're going to give them a big enforcer, Talis Fuaga of Oregon State, a kid who reminds me a lot of Darnell Wright from the last class. And just like Darnell Wright, he went to the NFL Combine and tested really well. I think he opened some eyes there. A 95th percentile athleticism, punches ticket into the middle of the first round. Here he gets taken by a team that desperately needs him. All right, the Indianapolis Colts are up next at 15. Bogman, the pick is yours. And uh, look, the Colts have a lot of weapons on offense, but it seems like the defense could really use some help. Yeah, I'm going to give them Quinion Mitchell, the cornerback out of Toledo. And this is a guy that has raised his stock more than anyone during the process here. And they are losing Kenny Moore as well, so they do need a slot guy. But I think taking snaps away from Jalen Johnson, the way he played last year, or Jalen Jones, excuse me, and Dallas Baker, um, those were rough snaps last year. So um, I think giving them another boundary corner, they can find a slot guy later. There's so many corners in this draft. They have other big needs as well, but I think this is the most desperate one. And Mitchell has definitely raised through the ranks. I would love to see him fall to Pittsburgh, but I will take him for the Colts here. That, that won't sense. happen, Boggs. He's oh, going to be QB. He's going to be yeah, yeah, CB1. Yeah, 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 deep Not He already said it wouldn't happen. He's living in the reality world. Uh, Seattle Ooh. is living in a different world at 16. Debro, uh, where do they go here with this pick? Have to solidify the interior of that offensive line, and they're going to do that with this pick. Jackson Powers Johnson, come on down. Center out of Oregon. Evan Brown was not great last year. You need to continue, regardless of whoever the quarterback is after this season, whether it's Chef Gino or not. Got to uh, solidify this offensive line. This is a great pick to do so. I wish his middle name was Danger. Just so I'm saying. Jackson Danger Powers. Just saying. Number 17, Jacksonville Jaguars. Thor, they're on the clock. Again, the Jags also a team that had a lot of expectations last year, and I think fell woefully short. So how do they go getting back on track in 2024 with this pick? Need some cornerback help. And if you wait on this pick, th there's going to be a big teardrop by the time you're up again. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you have a, a little bit, you have three guys or so after Quinion Mitchell, who I think has solidified himself as CB1, where you could legitimately take them with this pick. I'm going to take Terry on Arnold, though, for Jacksonville, who I think can come in, play right away, start right away, and really fortify that room. At in Indianapolis, 8.81 Raz, which was uh, plenty good enough, especially with what we saw in the field last year for a team that made the college football playoff. This is a guy who comes up and helps against the run, 90.5 PFF run grade uh, last year. And the uh, quarterback rating against on the targets, 50.7, very, very low. The kid was really good last year, broke out, and, and he proved the concept in Indianapolis. At 18 is the Cincinnati Bengals and Bogman. It seems pretty obvious offensive line is where they should go. Is that where they go? Well, come on. I mean, what has happened the two seasons that Joe Burrow has stayed on the field for the entire season? They went to the Super Bowl and the AFC Championship, right? So let's keep Joe Burrow upright, please, God. We have the, the they franchise T. Higgins, so... The wide receiver need is way, way less. There is a chance that they trade him, but I I think they'll um, keep him for this season at least. So Jonah Williams is gone. That's, you know, all the right tackle snaps. J.C. Latham is a natural right tackle. That's where he spent the last couple of seasons at Alabama. So I think it's plug and play. Let's go. Debro, is it harder to keep me upright, this Joe in Nashville, or Joe Burrow upright in Cincinnati? Ooh. <laughs> I'd say it's close, it's close. although you're more yeah. spry than people give you credit for. I, I am. I am. Old man, still going. Uh, at 19, the Rams are up next. D-Bro, the pick is yours. I know you said it's a, 
uh, a very deep draft in front of a cornerback. Do you think that's where they're going here? I do. And and if you look at the roster, just in general, like Akello Witherspoon being an unrestricted free agent, we don't know if he's back. Darion Kendrick started off the year playing out of his mind, and then he fell off into the season. 62% catch rate, 104 passer rating. Let's give them help on the secondary cornerback, Nate Wiggins out of Clemson. All right. So the pool starting to get emptied here at corner a little bit at 20. The Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, Bob, you mentioned before how they'd be looking for a corner. Thor, is that the direction they go as well? Yeah, let's empty it all the way. Uh, Kool-Aid McKinnistry, we're going to give to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh had that, the really old and, and bad cornerback room. Uh, they got Joey Porter Jr., one of my favorite cornerbacks in the last class. Mm-hmm. If they were if they were to add Kool-Aid McKinnistry across from him in this one, they would totally address that, and then they can move on to their other needs for the rest of the draft. All right, so Kool-Aid off the board here at 21. Miami, Scott Bogman, they are up next. Uh, Boggs, where do they go with this pick? They go to Texas for Byron Murphy, (laughs) and I don't know what this franchise was thinking letting Christian Wilkins walk. Mm. I really don't. Uh, I mean, they have nobody left on no. the off the the defensive line here because Bradley Chubb tore his ACL in early January. Um, Jalen Phillips is recovering from an Achilles tear on the edge. And now you let your most experienced best defensive lineman of all of them, Christian Wilkins walk instead of tagging him. I was really surprised. So this is a desperate need along the line, edge rusher, interior, whatever. Uh, I think Byron Murphy's the best guy left. Mm -hmm. I think he fits a need. You put him next to uh, Davis in there and uh, let him go. So, or Siler, I believe it is. So, and, and and let him go. So uh, they're still going to need edge rushers as well. And they don't have a lot of money, but I think Murphy's their best fit right now. Maybe this is their thought process, but those are big shoes to fill for Murphy. That's for sure. Philadelphia is up next at 22. Debro, you're up next. Bradley Rober is a free agent. They got rid of Avante Maddox. Let's give him a guy that has outside inside versatility and Cooper Deshaun, cornerback out of Iowa. Played 140 snaps in the slot in 2022. He can play the both boundary and the slot. I think there's questions about where his fit is going to be in the NFL, but I think he's a good fit for this defense. That is the fifth corner, I believe, right? In the first round, if you're keeping score at home. So there you go. But you want to make money, kids? Go be a cornerback in the NFL. All right, let's go next here after another corners off the board. That brings up the Houston Texans at 23. Thor, you're on the clock. We're going to take Leiatu Latu, the edge rusher from UCLA for Houston here. Latu is a guy who in some mocks has been closer to the top 10 or just outside of it. There, in, in, in terms of the on-field profile and the athleticism and what we saw last year on tape, that is justified. There are concerns, though, of course, about his medicals, which forced him to medically retire a couple of years ago before he came back onto the field. That is what could cause him to drop down just a little bit. So, some of the pessimism about that. But it, as long as he stays healthy, he would be a steal at this price point. And for a team where th- their identity on defense, he would fit. You put him across from Will Anderson. Now D'Amico Ryans is starting to get a pass rush like he recognizes from the San Francisco 49ers. I think this would be a really good pick. Number 24, the Dallas Cowboys. Scott Bogman, the pick is yours. Uh, Marius Mims, the offensive tackle out of Georgia. He is a monster. They have to replace Smith. Um, his projection, I mean, look, you, you could have put um, – a lot of offensive linemen here uh, fought now maybe, but he maybe moved moves to guard. They don't really need him. Um, you know, th- there's other offensive linemen here as well that, that they could get maybe Tyler Guyton, but I just, uh, I'm going for the most upside. I think Amarius Mims offers that gigantic human being road grader. I- I'm excited to see him play. So I'll put him in Dallas. All right. At 25, the green Bay Packers are up next. One of the youngest teams, uh, in the NFL, Debro, uh, what should they do with this 25th pick? They have needs on the offensive line, and I know we keep talking about the offensive lines for all these different teams, but this is a really good class. If you need to go address tackle, you need to go address the offensive line. This is a pick where Green Bay, just select Graham Barton, at offensive lineman out of Duke, don't know where he's going to play in the NFL. Could be a center, could be a tackle, could be a guard. Doesn't really matter. You draft him, and you figure it out in camp. Tampa Bay is up next at 26 Thor. That's your selection. So uh, obviously Mike Evans is coming back, but uh, you think that they're going with another wide receiver pick. Brian Thomas from LSU has fallen down the board here. He's a guy who in uh, a lot of other mocks, he's more in the middle of the first round. The way our exercise went, he ends up falling. We're going to take him for Tampa Bay here. He, he Brian Thomas goes to the combine 6'3", 210". 
997 Raz. He ended up running a uh, of 43340, which is not a surprise if if you've seen his tape. The kid's an absolute burner and he wins downfield. I mean th- those were all the routes he ran. It was it was the the goal routes and then the fades. Uh, Tampa Bay, yes, they, they brought back Mike Evans for a couple years and they have Godwin for one more year on his contract. You do this, you can kick Godwin back inside to the slot and then you just see after that. But uh, the, Tampa Bay needs one more starting receiver, even with Evans coming back. And then, of course, those guys aren't going to be there forever either. So I think this is a pretty good fit. Yeah, certainly fell down the board there, taking advantage of it. At 27, the Arizona Cardinals are up next. Bobman, what do they take advantage of on this board? I got him going to edge shop Robinson. They already addressed the wide receiver need, obviously with Marvin Harrison jr. Earlier, but they were 30th in sacks per game. 1.9. They desperately need uh, someone to put pressure on the QB. They had 33 <coughs> total sacks. Gardeck led them with six. So chop Robinson, incredibly athletic edge out of Penn state. I think he would be a great fit here. Number 28, the Buffalo bills that pick is up next D bro. That's you. I don't understand why people are looking at this guy as a fall or considering the combine, but I'm going to give the Buffalo Bills Troy Franklin, wide receiver out of Oregon. I think at his floor, he's an upgraded version of Gabriel Davis. People are disappointed because he mm. ran a 4-4. I don't freaking care, But he man. weaved still... during the gauntlet drill, D, bro. He must oh, suck. Oh, God. Here we go. And, and that's what people are talking about. And I don't understand it. I'm like, have you not watched his film? The guy has yeah. immediate and crazy speed. He still walked away from this with an 83rd percentile burst score. So you can miss me with the problems of, oh, he wasn't fast enough for what I thought he was going to run. He's still a first round pick in the NFL draft. Troy Franklin, come on down. Next up at 29 is the Detroit Lions. Thor, that pick belongs to you. We're going to go with Brandon or Braden Fiske, the defensive tackle from Florida State who blew up the combine. Uh, 997 Raz, 6'4", 292. Not the best against the run, but he is a really, really good pass rusher. And the athleticism, as he showed in Indianapolis, is crazy. 478, 40-yard dash, which was 99th percentile. His vertical is 95th percentile. His broad was 97th percentile. His shuttle was 96th percentile. That's the kind of kid that, that Detroit wants to add up front next to Aiden Hutchinson. So we're going to give him uh, Braden Fiske. All right, so Braden Fiske goes off the board. At 30, the Baltimore Ravens are up bogs. I know you love the Ravens, so go ahead and make the pick. Well, hey, look, this one is the easiest one, uh, I think, to make. It's Adonai Mitchell, the wide receiver out of Texas. This team needs a field stretcher. Mm-hmm. Bateman has not gotten it done. OBJ is a UFA. Give this team a deep threat, and he opens up the reins for everything. And by the way, guess who recruited him to Georgia? Offensive coordinator Todd Monken, who is now the Ooh. OC for the Baltimore Ravens. Let's connect the dots here. Oh. Pretty easy. A.D. Mitchell going to the Ravens. Picking, uh, you know, taking a page out of uh, Andrew Erickson's book there with his big board <laughs> yeah. of uh, strings and dots and things like that. Where, you know, it looks like CSI. I like that, Boggs. I like that. So Baltimore goes wide receiver. That puts the 49ers up next at 31. Thor, let's go to you for that pick. San Francisco needs offensive line help, both at tackle and on the interior. I'm going to give them a a developmental guy because there's not a sure thing here. I'm going to give them Tyler Guyton, who is a very intriguing ball of clay, a guy who measured in almost six foot eight at the NFL Combine, 322 pounds with 96 percentile athleticism. And, and ridiculous wingspan and everything like that moves around really well in the on-field drills just smooth as can be at that size he's someone that they can work with uh would work really well in his own system that is where he should be going in the nfl we're going to give him tyler guyton another man who's been referred to as an intriguing ball of clay Derek brown you get the last pick here at 32 what do the kansas city chiefs do with this last pick of the first round This has been the popular pick in every single mock that you find out in the universe, but it's not the wrong pick, guys. Xavier Worthy, come on down, wide receiver out of Texas. (laughs) Yes, everybody will talk about the (laughs) blinding speed at the Combine when they really should be leading off the conversation with Xavier Worthy about his route running. Mm -hmm. He's going to be a stud. This is not a bust. He is fantastic. Go ahead and let's start the hype train, boys. Xavier Worthy time. Let's go. Mm. It's very exciting. There you go. So Worthy close out the first round here for the Kansas City Chiefs or for the Kansas City Chiefs. On to round two. D-Bro, let's stick with you. You're going to kick things off here with the Carolina Panthers with a 33rd overall pick. What do they do? 
uh, come on, the low-hanging fruit here. They're taking a wide receiver. They have to take a wide receiver. You have to surround Bryce Young with weapons. Jonathan Mingo said it all last year is a bust so far. So let's go right back to the wide receiver position. Let's give him Lad McConkey, wide receiver out of Georgia, who surpassed every expectation I had for him in the combine. If you haven't listened to the Fantasy Pros NFL Draft Show, I issued my apology. I did not see 4-3 speed coming, but he crushed the combine. He could sneak into the first round, but I'm giving him the top of the second round here. Okay, so Panthers start things off here round two of the wide receiver. The New England Patriots are about next, Thor. What do they do with their second pick of the 2024 draft? Yeah, apologies don't come easy for Debro. Oh, and because he go. did that just as a gesture, I, I would like to do one as well. You know, goodwill. I saw Troy Fatanu of Washington coming into the combine as a guard. He is in my database as a guard. He showed at the combine that kid can play tackle at the next level, uh, both in terms of the wingspan, just the rote measurement, but also the movement, the the kid, uh, uh, 94th and almost 95th percentile athleticism with the wingspan of a tackle. So he has hit the threshold for tackle. New England is a team, you know, we talk about this when we talk about the possibility of them trading down from three, about how it's just like, you know, throw it up against the wall, their needs all over the place. They have needs all along the offensive line. With Fatano, you can bring them in. Try to try him a tackle to start with. If he fails, it's like baseball. You fail him down the defensive spectrum. I, I think Fatano here at the top of the second round, New England would be extremely happy on Friday night if he was here. Mm -hmm. We're going to give him Fatano. In our last draft, he actually went in the first round. So a little bit of slippage there for Fatano uh, in this second 2.0 version of our mock draft. At 35, the Arizona Cardinals are up next. Bogman, where do they go? Uh, I got him taking Kamari Lasseter, the cornerback out of Georgia, An another boundary corner going here, and this is a big need for them. They went ahead and took uh, Garrett Williams last season late. He was injured going into the draft. He played in the second half of the season, and they've got their slot guy locked down, but they need two boundary corners, and I think uh, Lasseter allowing only 36 and a half completion percentage, which was fifth among defensive backs or cornerbacks with 250 plus snaps last season. And number one in the SEC would be a really good ad for the Cardinals. All right. At 36, the Washington Commanders are back for their second pick in the draft. Debro, that pick belongs to you. Uh, we're just going to sit here. Like, like I said, for the Packers, we're going to just go ahead and make this selection and then figure it out in camp. And that's Jordan Morgan, offensive tackle out of Arizona. Does he stay a tackle? Does he go to guard? I think he can stay a tackle. But the, 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 the commanders, they have needs everywhere. Their entire left side of their offensive line are all free agents. I mean, literally, we're talking about left tackle, left guard, center. So wherever you think Jordan Morgan fits, just draft him and well, we'll find out. The Chargers are up next at 37. Thor, that pick is yours. They already have Bowers, so that's a good thing here. Uh, what do they do next? Yeah, we gave them the offensive weapon uh, the, with the first <laughs> pick. Now we're going to give them the planet-sized world record in Tavondre <laughs> Sweat from Texas, the guy who won the best defensive lineman award in college football last season and the Big uh, Big 12 defensive lineman of the year last year as Make well. Make him sweat. Yeah, I stole this one from you, Bogman. I, I I know you wanted to wax poetic about him, but I had to steal it. Tavondre Sweat, 6'4", 360 pounds, and he moved around pretty well for a big fella at the combine. Mm -hmm. Wasn't quite the Jordan Davis show from last year, but he did more than enough to lock himself into the second round and probably in the top half of it. Th this is the kind of guy that Harbaugh likes to use in, in the middle pivot of his defense to allow the linebackers to flow around to the ball. Tavondre Sweat is going to occupy two guys every single time. And, and on passing downs, he can also push the, the interior guys back into the quarterback as well. So the oh, remake no, of man. the Chargers has begun. The Tennessee Titans, while well, they're in uh, a big remake as well at 38. Boggs, what do they do with their next pick? I'm going to give him Ricky Pearsall, uh, the wide receiver out of Florida. And Callahan needs wide receivers to make uh, this offense mm -hmm. vertical and stretch downfield like he had with the Bengals. The offensive line needs a lot of help, too, but we addressed that with Joe Alt in the first. Pearsall will step in and take the slot snaps right away uh, from Phillips. And Levis has a reliable target that we have seen. He His catch radius is enormous. He can go up and get it. So uh, a reliable target for a guy like Will Levis, I think, is a big thing that the Titans need and they get it with Ricky Pearsall. The last pick the Giants made in round one was Malik Neighbors at 39. Debro, what do they do next? Xavier McKinney is a free agent. They have a big need on the back end. Let's give him Tyron Newbin, safety out of Minnesota. 
I mean, come on, guys. I mean, it's just it's easy for these teams to draft talented players, especially when they have needs on the roster. All right, Washington is up again at 40, Thor. A plethora of picks. Where do they go with this next one? Plethora of picks, plethora of needs. You, you, you guys recall part of the reason they got all these picks was they traded their two stud defensive ends uh, last year around the deadline. We're going to bring in Darius Robinson from Missouri, a guy who has inside-outside versatility. That was the supposition, at least, heading into Indianapolis, and he proved that with the athletic profile. Goes in there 6'5", 285, 96 percentile athleticism. You can play him on the edge. You can play him inside. You can move him around, uh, down in and down out, depending on how you like. He has the athleticism for it. He has the reach for it, uh, the game for it, the versatility for it. I, I think Washington would be very happy with Darius Robinson here. All right, so Robinson goes to the Washington Commanders. That brings us to the Packers at 41. Scott Bogman, your pick. I mean, look, this division, you got to cover Jefferson, Addison, uh, Amandre St. Brown, Jameson Williams, Laporta, DJ Moore, Cole Komet, whoever else the Bears add. So, you know, the Packers have had issues at the at cornerback. I'm going to give them TJ Tampa, the cornerback out of Iowa State. You know, Jair Alexander, still very good. Eric Stokes has played well, but these guys have missed a ton of games. So let's put Tampa in there to stop the bleeding in that secondary. All right, so at 42, this is the remnants of that trade from earlier. So we have the Chargers taking this other pick here again from the Minnesota Vikings. This was to move up earlier with uh, J.J. McCarthy selecting over there earlier in round one. So, Debro, we'll let you make this pick at 42. The Chargers are remaking this team and Jim, uh, excuse me, and uh, yeah, Jim Harbaugh's vision. So what is next for the Chargers? Well, a uh, little bit behind the scenes here. When Boggs took TJ Tampa, I was reeling. Like, I was like, <laughs> oh, my Lord. And you better believe the Chargers would be, too. In their war room, they're like, me. But for a player that did not test well at the Combine, came in with a 4.7 Raz. So we have him falling outside of the first round in this mock. Let's go Ennis Regstraw Jr., cornerback out of Missouri. Michael Davis is a free agent. They need help on the back end. I know Regstraw did not help himself at all with all of his testing, but I think I don't think that he's falling outside of the second round. That brings Atlanta up to 43. Thor, you're up next for the pick. Yeah, first pick for Atlanta, we gave him Roman Dunze, of course, in this exercise. We've already said we were giving them Kirk Cousins. Let's help out the defense with this pick. They could still use an edge rusher. We're going to give them Chris Braswell from Alabama. Braswell is a guy who was uh, workmanlike earlier on in his career, uh, sort of broke out last year. I was curious to see what the athletic profile would be. He tested really well, 86 percentile athleticism, uh, 4640 at 6'3 and a half, 251 in Indianapolis. Th this is a guy who could come in and play right away for Atlanta on the edge. Next up at 44, the Las Vegas Raiders, Scott Bogman. Where do they go with this one? I'm going to give him Michael Penix, the quarterback out of Washington. I would love this landing spot for Penix. I think it'd be great because I don't know that Aiden O'Connell Aiden O'Connell is the long-term answer for this team. Now, they could still bring in a free agent, but I don't know if they're going to spend big money on anyone because they're not going to get Cousins. So, you know, maybe they trade for Fields. That's an option as well with Getze as the OC moving there who has experience with Fields. But I think um, we heard Antonio Pierce talk about it. You have to have this position in the NFL. They don't have it right now in Aiden O'Connell. So I think they got to take a shot. Michael Penix is still on the board, and they have good options for him. Jacoby Myers, uh, Devontae Adams is there, obviously, and they spent a high pick on Michael Mayer last season. So I, I think this would, you know, put him into an offense with talent, which is exactly what it was in Washington. So I think this is a very, very good landing spot for Penix. I love this pick for the Raiders. Love it, Boggs. Mm -hmm. You know I'm a Penix fan. I like him. He's fun. All right, and New Orleans at 45. D-Bro, that's your boys. So what do you want to give to your Saints? Well, before the Saints, I'll, I will say I love Bogman's pick to the Raiders with Michael Penix. Mm -hmm. And I think I think Penix's floor is 57 to Tampa Bay. He's he's a Bruce Arians quarterback through and through, man. So <laughs> sure. I, I think Penix is not falling out of the second round. Uh, but uh, over to New Orleans with the recent, uh, they cut Marcus May. They have a na uh, need at safety. Let's give him Javon Bullard safety out of Georgia. All right. So the safety out of Georgia goes to New Orleans at 46. The Colts are up next. Thor, that pick belongs to you. 
Yeah, the Colts are a team that could definitely take a wide receiver in round one. If they mm-hmm. don't, like we have in, in this exercise, we have them going a different direction. I think they're going to take one in the second round. Keon Coleman uh, is a guy that we have fallen here in this exercise. But if not him, there's the receiving depth. And, you know, we always focus on the top three guys, but the receiving depth of this class is also ridiculous. So you could theoretically wait, and then you're still going to get a really good one here. Keon Coleman, he ran the 4-6-1. That was the bad news of his combine. The rest of his testing profile, though, was aces. He also ran the fastest gauntlet time by the by the tracking and then is you know his tape last year that the context i need i need to provide for it is the first two months of the season he was really really good it was in november he had an injury where then he missed the game he came back he wasn't 100 percent. then jordan travis gets injured and then florida state tossed out guys that should not have been on an fbs field and they were throwing balls that were not accurate or on target whatsoever keon coleman last year only 55 of the balls thrown at him uh, 87 targets, but only 55 of them were charted as catchable. He caught 50 of them. 39 of them went for either touchdowns or first downs. All right. So we're giving new players, obviously, to small teams. But if you need new tires for your car, Discount Tire is your go-to. They have exceptional service and you get 30% shorter average wait times when you buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. They have this really cool feature called Treadwell, which is an online tire buying guide that gives you transparency on tire performance as well as personalized recommendations based on your location and driving habits. Discount Tire is also the largest independent tire retailer in the country, so it has the biggest selection of tires and wheels. And here's a pro tip from the experts at Discount Tire. You can prevent wear and boost gas mileage by keeping your tires properly inflated because tire pressure supports the weight of your vehicle, and it's important to check that for safety. So if it's been over a month since you last checked your tire pressure... Stop by one of their local stores for a free tire and safety air pressure check discount tire. Let's get you taken care of. Let's get the Giants taken care of, Bogman. At 47, what do they do? Hey, look, one of the few fun things about watching the Giants play last year was watching the interior of the defensive line with one of my favorite players, Dexter Lawrence. He is outstanding. Yeah. Uh, you know, him and Aaron Donald are one and two, whatever way you want to put them in terms of interior defensive linemen, but they have nobody next to him. So let's give them another big man, Chris Jenkins, a Feldman freak uh, out of Michigan. Jenkins is a guy that can struggle with double teams, so he's a little undersized as an inside guy, but it's fine because Dexter Lawrence is taking up two to three guys on every play. So I think this is a match made in heaven for the Giants. I would love this pick for them. So let's put Jenkins right next to Dexter Lawrence and see what he can do. That puts Jacksonville back on the board at 48 and Debro back in the hot seat. Well, we know that Jacksonville has a need at wide receiver if they don't bring Calvin Ridley back. And if you've already been doing like rookie mock drafts with our mock draft simulator over fantasypros.com slash simulator, you're going to be looking for this guy maybe in the second round of your drafts. And that's Xavier Leggett, wide receiver out of South Carolina. I know that if you're uh, the models and all the types of things, he didn't break out until late, but he also put up production last year, guys, like 11th in yards per route run, 18th in PFF receiving grade. Jacksonville has a need at receiver, and I think Leggett fills it. All right, so Leggett off the board. That brings up the Cincinnati Bengals at 49. Thor, that pick belongs to you. I love this fit. I'm giving them Jatavian Sanders, the tight end from Mm -hmm. Texas. Some people were disappointed by his testing. I thought it was fine. He was an 80th percentile athlete uh, at the Combine. He's not a blocker. He's just a big receiver, and that's what the Bengals need at that position. He's going to be a big slot there. Last year, Jutavian Sanders was pressed more than any tight end in this class. He, he didn't get stuck once. He also didn't drop a ball last year. So, I mean, he's a reliable target who creates separation. Joe Burrow is going to love working with him. All right, so the tight end goes to the Cincinnati Bengals. That brings the Eagles up for number 50. Scott Bogman, you're on the clock. Hey, look, uh, that's five Longhorns, by the way, which makes yeah. this, I mean, because this is egregious uh, here, but I'm going to go with an Aggie, and I'm going to give Philadelphia Edrin Cooper, the linebacker out of Texas A&M. <laughs> look, Dean is the only one left on the roster, right? And he's coming off a Liz Franck injury. I know that they don't like to take linebackers this high. I get it, but uh, I, I think with 
this guy, he offers size, he offers speed, and he doesn't come with the medical concerns that Peyton Wilson has as well. So I think you have to address this position at some point. This is the guy to do it with. And I think the Eagles will be doing cartwheels if Cooper is still on the board for them at this point. Is that the European pronunciation, by the way? Liz Franck? <laughs> I just wanted to know. <laughs> Liz Franck. It might be, yeah, it might well, be it, French. It's a French injury. It was from horse. <laughs> it was from the, the soldiers who would get their foot stuck in the stirrup. For is real. This, That's what the injury is. The Liz Franck injury. Really? Go Google Google that. Is that a real fact? It is. is that a Google real thing? It. Google I, it. Uh, this is amazing. Oh, God. You See, Google it. Let's you go. come for the football okay. here. You come for the football. You stay. Incredible. For the vocabulary. Yeah. That's what you stay for. Let's get wow. to the next pick here. That was incredible. 51, the Pittsburgh Steelers. D, bro, the pick is yours. I, I'm still Googling <laughs> He's Liz, Liz Franck here, Frank. okay? We like, are. It's gonna, <laughs> how, about, it's, how about I do this one, uh, D, bro? It's <laughs> well, Zach Frazier. I, I, okay, yes, yes. So I, the, the reality and the transparency of this is we are playing phone a friend. So I did phone a friend being the biggest, the, the biggest Pittsburgh Steelers fan on this show and, well, fantasy pros. So, Bogman, what, like, what, while I look up French history, yeah. you just go ahead and set this up, man. Who are the Steelers taking? Zach Frazier, the center out of... Of West Virginia. This is a desperate need for the Steelers. They tried Kendrick Green. He spent his whole year on his rear end. They spent. They tried Mason Cole. He spent the whole year on his rear end. We need to get someone that can stay upright and snap the ball properly to whatever crappy quarterback is behind center. So let's Damn. go with Zach Frazier uh, and get a road grader for Arthur Smith's offense here. I Bogman's right. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead, Joe. I'm like originated the... from the French surgeon Jacques Les Franc de Saint Martin, which I'm pretty sure he. Played at Toledo. Uh, I'm at some point. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. that guy was might still have eligibility. Line. Yeah, yeah might. He might. Has a transfer. Yeah. Just stay for the NIL money, baby. <laughs> He's in the portal. All right, at 52, you can tell we're in the second round, folks. I can't wait till we get to the three round show. The Rams are Woo-hoo. up next. Thor, what do the Rams do with this selection at 52? Rams took a shot on Stetson Bennett last year, and that does not appear yeah, that it's going to work out for them. We're going to take Bo Nix here. Uh, to me, Bo Nix is more of a third-round guy, but I do expect him to go in the second round in April. Uh, Bo Nix, 93rd in the FBS last year in dot, uh, is sort of in a Mickey Mouse offense at Oregon. You, you do give him credit, though, for some of the improvements that he made, which is how he's going to get into the second round. Certainly, he's a he's a veteran guy. He, you know, he's, he's been in action for a long time. A lot of it's taken a lot of snaps, different stuff like that. 45 to 3 TDI and T rate last year. But some of those questions about his game and the deep ball throwing pocket presence when he has to sit back there, different stuff like that. You can't create an offense, an NFL offense, out of yak yardage, which is what they did at Oregon. I think that's what caused him to drop down a little bit. But he could be a fit for Sean McVay or seen as a fit in that system. So we're going to give the Rams Bo Nix here. I, was gonna say, I love that this. What the Rams I do? love it. <laughs> isn't that the Rams offense last time I checked? Uh, so <laughs> yeah. It makes a lot of sense to Puka. me. Uh, I'm just saying, Puka, mm. Cooper Cup. I mean, that's pretty much the Hit him on the hands. Yeah, yeah. in space. Uh, next up happens. is... The Philadelphia Eagles at 53 and Scott Bogman. I can't wait to see who they select and what fun thing we're going to learn next. I have have a Trey Benson, the running back out of Florida State. Uh, Swift is a UFA. So is Boston Scott, leaving Gainwell as the main back. I don't think that he will be. That is going to be the plan going into the season. There are plenty of free agent running backs, but Benson would be a nice fit with his speed next to Hertz. I think they have other spots they need to spend the money on. And I don't think the Eagles have a ton of cap space. Actually, they do have a decent amount of cap space. But I I think they'll let somebody else take those running backs and spend on them, and they'll take one in the draft and I think it's going to be Benson. The Cleveland Browns are up next at 54. Debro, that pit belongs to you. Yeah, let's just fill a need here, boys. Linebacker Peyton Wilson out of NC State. Anthony Walker's a free agent. Uh, they have other needs, other people that are, look, they're, they're bereft of linebackers here. So let's give them Wilson here. 9.81 Raz, ran a 4 4 40 can also drop back in coverage, man. 94th percentile coverage grade last year, can handle slot coverage in a pinch. Wilson, come on down. The Miami Dolphins are up with pick number 55. Thor, you're in the driver's seat for this one. Yeah, Miami could use a starter on the interior offensive line. Uh, They run the zone blocking scheme. As you guys know, they look for athletic guys there. Uh, Christian Haynes from Connecticut would be a really good fit. He's a guy that we saw down in Mobile who was very impressive. He was one of like the top guys that everyone was talking about for the offensive line class down there. Then Christian Haynes goes to Indianapolis and Tessa is a 91st percentile athlete at 6'3", 317. 
on his tape, he is one of the better pulling guards in this class and one of the better uh, guys that projects to his own system in this class. I think Mike McDaniel would look at this guy if he is available in the second round and be like, yeah, that's a dude that we that will start in year one. All right, so a starter potentially in year one at guard. The Dallas Cowboys at 56 are up next, so Debro. Oh, I'm sorry, Scott Bogman is up with that pick. Boggs, what do the Cowboys do? Well, yeah, to peel the curtain back again, uh, I had to be talked in to the Longhorn here, uh, Jonathan mm. Brooks, Fireboy oh. Debro. And um, look, I, the reason I I wasn't sure about Jonathan Brooks uh, going to Dallas is because he is coming off an ACL tear in November, and this is a big need for this team. So I do think they're going to want availability early in the season. But as Debro informed me, the Cowboys doctors are the ones that are keeping tabs on Jonathan Brooks, and they are the ones that said that he is probably going to be available by camp. So if it's there, math we'll trust it and say that jonathan brooks is going to dallas to replace tony pollard and be an absolute perfect fit in big d i would love to see this happen d bro you're up next for the tampa bay buccaneers at 57 all right well i'm just gonna keep building <laughs> needs for teams here boys uh buccaneers need help on the interior of their offensive line aaron stinney's a free agent let's give him cooper bb guard out of kansas state and yeah uh, the dallas Cowboys team uh, physician actually performed Jonathan Brooks' surgery. There you go. Um, the more fun medical facts here on the program. I don't have a list wrong, but I do other things to provide I, for I'm this just, show. I'm just, so, you wait, know. I'm just still trying to figure out how the heck did Bogman go down the rabbit hole to figure out what that Liz Frank origin was. Like, I'm up that's... late. I'm up late, I'm Joe. <laughs> so Is that of like you, one no of the facts in Laughing Trophy or something? I got a lot of, of, it, I, I got a lot of free time, it. gentlemen. So, yeah. you know. Insomnia is a hell of a drug. All right, Green Bay right. is up next at 58. <laughs> Thor, you're up next. Yeah, we're going to help out their offensive line by giving them the BYU offensive tackle, Kingsley Suamataya. Easy for you to say. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. I, Nailed it. Landed it. Got it. <laughs> need, the, need the pronunciation guide. Suamataya. Yeah, an yeah. Oregon transfer who, who goes to BYU, he still needs to work on his run blocking, but the pass blocking is where you hang uh, the hat on with his game. And then he he goes and he tests really well, uh, 92nd percentile athleticism as well. I think that's where he punches ticket, at least in round two. Uh, and he's a, the, the Packers always look at the athletic profiles. They sort of fetishize it with their offensive linemen. So I, I think you could connect the dots and, and project interest between those two sides. Uh, Penny well, Sewell's cousin, right? Some Mai Tai? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Houston up next at 59. Scott Bogman, back to you. Uh, let's go Brandon Dorless, the interior defensive lineman from Oregon. I think the Texans do bring back Sheldon Rankins, but uh, even so, they're still going to need uh, help on the interior. And this is a guy that is kind of a tweener. He played on the inside. He offers you edge as well. So I think this is a good fit for the Texans. That puts the Buffalo Bills up at number 60. Derek Brown, the pick is yours. Well, Daquan Jones is a free agent. Let's give him defensive tackle Michael Hall Jr. at Ohio State. 94th percentile pass rush grade. But the Bills need some help up front. Go ahead. Let's go, Hall. Get at the quarterback. Yeah, they need a lot of defensive help. They've been getting rid of defensive mm -hmm. players left and right this offseason. Uh, next up at 61, the Detroit Lions. Thor, that pit belongs to you. Yeah, the Lions with their first pick thought about giving them interior offensive line help. I, I didn't end up doing that. Gave them uh, uh, Braden Fiske, as you guys recall. But this pick, that's where we're going to fortify the interior offensive line and give them Christian Mahogany from Boston College. Uh, he's a guy who played a long, long time there, been starting for a long time. When he got injured a couple years ago, the entire Boston College offensive line blew up. They, they were terrible, They're unwatchable, really. Uh, Mahogany, 6'3", 333, and tested as 96 percentile athlete in Indianapolis. And we already know that he can play with the best of the best. Uh, he, he turned down a lot of uh, ACC of their top interior defensive linemen over the past couple of years. So he, he's going to go there and he's going to play right away. The Ravens are up next at 62. Scott Bogman, you're on the clock. Yeah, I mean, I, I hate the Ravens, but I respect them because they do the right thing uh, <laughs> yeah. all the time in the draft. And you just sit and take the best player available. Cam Kitchens is still available. The uh, big physical uh, 
safety out of Miami. And this is a guy, his stock dropped a little bit during mm -hmm. uh, the combine, but he's still very, very good. And with um, Hamilton playing up in the box, they can let him roam, which is what he is best at. And I think this is a good fit for a spot that's kind of dried up for the Ravens over the last couple of years with Chuck Clark leaving and Geno Smith uh, leaving, or uh, Geno Stone, excuse me, leaving as a uh, UFA this season. So Cam Kitchens comes in and can probably play when Marcus Williams gets hurt because that happens every single year. Two picks remain. One belongs to the San Francisco 49ers and Derek Brown at 63. They need help on the offensive line, boys. Right tackles position position specifically. Colton McKivitz is not it. And I did have to go to the pronunciation guide, just to give a transparency here, to make sure I do not butcher this kid's name. Kuran Amagaji, offensive tackle out of Yale. 36 and a half inch arms, so reach out and get him, big man. 98th percentile grade last year on zone runs, so he's going to fit the system. Isn't Ebro. he uh, Joe's cousin? He is my cousin. Yes, he does. Yes. Yes. Anything that ends Italian in vowels, pr pronunciation. My cousin. That's, that's yeah. the way it goes. <laughs> uh, and last, to wrap things up here with round two of the 2024 NFL draft, our 2.0 draft, the Kansas City Chiefs and Thor Nystrom. Thor, what do you have for Kansas City? Yeah, it's almost not fair. In the first round, we gave him a record-breaking speed guy for Patrick <laughs> Mahomes. Last pick of the second round, can I interest you guys in an offensive tackle? 98th percentile athleticism at six, seven and a half, three 331 Oof. pounds, who allowed zero sacks in the Big 12 last year. 99.3 pass pro efficiency, 92.8 pass, uh, pass pro grade from PFF. Patrick Paul, I, I think this pick, what it shows is the depth of this offensive tackle class mm -hmm. where it truly mm -hmm. goes through round two. Patrick Paul is a really good prospect, but because of the depth of it, you could get a really good tackle at the end of round two. If the draft went this way for the world champion Chiefs, they would be doing backflips going out of that war room on Friday night. Patrick Paul would be a really good fit for them and an awesome value. Just well, a shade have, yeah. under 3,000 snaps at wow. left tackle as yes. well. Wow. Patrick Ball. Durability too. Uh, that's crazy. And I've already uh, made my wager uh, ready preseason on the Chiefs for the 3 P because I just think that uh, they are locked yeah. in. They know exactly what they have in front of them. And certainly the draft was kind to them this time. But what do you all think? Drop your comments below. We know you've been watching this whole time on YouTube. Subscribe to the Fantasy Bros YouTube channel. Ring that bell till it goes ding for notifications. We've got a lot more draft coverage to come. We've also got free agency upon us too. We're going to have some microcasts for that and some more long form format, both on the audio and the visual side. So make sure you're with us. And I'm sure free agency is going to change the dynamic of some of these drafts coming up in the future, but we've got some great guests lined up and we want you to join us for all of those shows as well. But again, we want to hear from you. Do you like what your team ended up with? Do you hate it? Uh, did you learn something today? I think the answer is yes. No matter what, you absolutely learned something about Liz Franck, which is uh, something By the way, I, the answer there is really, Najee had the Liz Franck injury, and I'm the guy that's like, how do I donate? What Do I have a Liz Franck? Can I donate it to him? <laughs> What's the thing? So uh, that's how I, I don't we think got you to have the rabbit anymore. hole. I think you had one in high school, <laughs> no. and, and <laughs> they got all blown out. Somewhere. You left it in your locker. But mm -hmm. that'll do it for us. However, the story of the game goes on for Debro, Scott Bogman, and Thor Nystrom, the men behind the NFL draft here at Fantasy Pros. Check out all of their content. Of course, the Dynasty Football Podcast and the NFL Draft Show that Thor and Debra have too. That's going to do it for us. We'll see you next time, kids. <laughs>